Hey, what's up guys? It is Outlander time. I'm by myself. I feel like I can handle this by myself. I'm trying something a little different because my audio has been hit and miss here and there lately. I don't know what's been going on, but I'm going to try to also include a little bit of video in this in the funny way. Little bits of video. Outlander, as you know, is very big on uh, copyright strikes. They don't like... They don't like it a lot, but I think I found a way to try and include some stuff. If it doesn't work, I'll just re-upload it twice, but I'm attempting here, so give me credit. I'm recording the audio a little different too. Uh, hopefully it works. I might be making more work for myself in the long run, but uh, d fingers crossed this time. This season's starting off in a cool way. I'm not sure where it's going. We got Bree and Roger getting married. It's all happy, seemingly, but then she also finds out that Bonnet's been sighted in the area. Murtaugh's hiding, and Jamie's like, you gotta go because they want me to get you, so you, you, you gotta go. I love you, but please go. And also, you know, like, war is about to kick off. That's about to start, so we'll see how this goes. This is Season 5, Episode 2 of Outlander. Its title is Between Two Fires. Let's do it. Sanchez, in the background, is tucking himself in. <laughs> I make my bed. I try to, I try to, like, look nice for you guys in a small way. And he's talking himself in. Sanchez, bro, stop. <laughs> there he is. All right, you good? All right, let's go. Well, we're starting off with the fight, which isn't great. Oh, Mert is so smoldery. Oh, this is dark. Oh, good old-fashioned tar and feathering. It sounds cool, but when you see it, it's terrifying. Okay. Lordy. I've been letting his blood. I've given them purgatives. What more could I have done? Oh, you, you doctors. I threw leeches at him. Why didn't it fix it? I cut all of his blood out. You tried bloodletting. I and some blue mass pills. Mercury. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be fine. Mercury's fine. I'm so sorry. But you did this. I mean, maybe don't tell her that right now. But you did this, honey. Early America was insane. It was like, you know what we should do? Just try giving you this and see if it's poison. Oh my god. Yeah, why are you just I doing that autopsy out in the open? Like this, but I had to do it. I had to confirm what the cause of death was. You could warn a girl when she walks into the room. Mom, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, For he's like, this yeah. is a very sweet moment, but I don't want to... Can I go in the other room? It's nasty. You should teach Marcely to be a surgeon. She knows how to cut animals already. What? What's people? Oh, you all tar and feathery, son. One. Murta Fitzgibbons. Please say you don't have him. You better not have Murta, so help me. He better have gotten away. Okay, not Murta. That's good. Okay, also not Murta. We're, we're still doing good. Who is that? Turn around. I can't see. Oh, wait. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Panic. Well, at least it's not Murta, but that, that's a different Colonel situation. James, I say that to me again when my hands are untied. You, I like your spirit. You're plucky. I will remind you that I am a lieutenant in His Majesty's army. Okay. Huh. Mm, help him say I am Murta Fitzgibbons. Yeah, yeah. Did everyone say that you're Murta. It'll confuse them. Is that so? Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, he got poked into Tom Tom. That was an overreaction. Spit you can wipe off. Tom Tom things are serious. Yeah, you overreacted. Yeah. Squirrel. Like, oh, don't shoot at the squirrel. I was admiring the squirrel. Captain Rod Tufty. It's a squirrel. Teaches children about road safety. <laughs> sort of like I want to look that up now. Steady. It's like they're lining up a pool shot, or like the ghost thing, but it's with shooting at trees. Oh, turkeys! Get him! Oh! Oh! Got it! What have I done? You killed a dude. I saw it. But Marsley, do you trust me? Right. Yeah, magic carpet ride. That's always the question. S yeah, yeah. Turn her into a surgeon. This is gonna be legit. No. You 
problems you'd let me explain. You should explain first before you pull that back. Oh, you pulled it back. from <laughs> evil. Roger and I filled the coffin with rocks. Oh my gosh. You're just full on grave robbing now. I love it. See for yourself. Whoa. Girl, more warning. And after I finish teaching you, we'll stitch them up and give them a proper burial. I promise. At nightfall. In the rain. There should be violin music playing. Very Frankenstein. Bring out your dead. Cling. Bring out your dead. Cling. We have an army of men here. Men with nothing left to lose. And farmers though we be, we beat our plowshares into swords and a training for battle. Yeah, America. Oh, are they doing beeswax candles? Is that beeswax? I have a beeswax ca candle right here. Ow, it's really hot. I shouldn't have touched it. You're a fine healer, mistress, and we are blessed to have you. Dr. Wilson is a learned physician. Oh, you're just a lady. Can you imagine if it was discovered that the king was being poisoned by his own physician? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be crazy. T L M S G B K V. Hmm. You need glasses, boy. Thank you for helping me hide the body. An apprentice <laughs> under the root cellar. Surely that's a Nancy Drew novel begging to be read. <laughs> I'd read it. We have another letter. As much as I love all of you being here. Hope you don't stay. Oh. Brianna and I can't go back until we know whether Jemmy can hear those stones. True. True facts. Gotta hear them stones. I'm tomorrow. still not sure how that works, but I'm into it. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. I want to camp by there. He's walking between two fires. And you? Yeah, title of the episode. Wave. You're not planning to eat all of that, are you? No, I'm going to let it go moldy. That chick's like, oh, what? Terrible way. Penicillin has been invented for another hundred years. Well, we just won't put it in medical books. So time, space, history, be damned. Yeah, I'd do what I want. Jeremiah was Baby. Was a good friend of mine. I dig this song. Oh, he's going to find that picture you drawed. Drawing pictures. Uh-oh. He seen it. Look at him go, little man! Look at our ah! Whoa! It just cuts to chicks fighting. I love that jump cut. <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to an associate of mine. May I present Mr. Stephen Bonnet? <gasps> what? I looked down, my candle was going out, and I looked back and there's a rapist. That we have, how shall I put it? Untethered you from your past. Oh, it's not good. Dude, the problem is, you're fighting over money. If you both get your face too ugly, it's going to be harder to make money hooking. Better settle this like gentlemen. Oh, God. Is it, whenever there's one fight, there's always going to be another fight. It gets people's blood up. Oh, oh, you got to cut. You got to boo-boo. Are you still going to kill him? You do seem awful. That was. I just... <laughs> oh. Everyone's like, you took it too far, bro. But almost set a better example. I'm a father now. Oh, gosh. He's gonna come stirring stuff up. Oh, drama. All right, so now things are starting. Like the first episode was like giving you a little bit of happiness, but then also foreshadowing like things to come. And this is starting the things that are gonna come. Murtaugh's running off with the regulators, busting up people's houses and like throwing tar and feathers on them, which is kind of cool, but it's like, dude, you're supposed to keep a little bit of a low profile for a while. What's that? Claire's starting to realize that it is a hard place to live simply because she has a lot of knowledge about medical what have you, but no one takes her serious. 
And she's still sitting around her people doing just crazy things that people used to do before medicine got a little more advanced. And she's realizing that she can't save all these people, but if people die, maybe she can, like, use their deaths to help prevent future deaths. And so she starts carving up a dude. Like, this dude dies. <laughs> Instead of burying him, she's like, let's put, put rocks in there and then I'm gonna carve up this dude. Jamie's got to go around with all the red coats and try to find the regulators. He's still supposed to be looking for Murtaugh, but he's like, I doesn't want to find him, clearly, because it's his godfather. So he's, like, stuck between two hard things, too. Between two fires, if you will. He goes off with this one red coat dude, and uh, they see the aftermath of the town that Murtaugh busted up. And there's three guys there, and he's like, whew, not Murtaugh, we're good, but still not great. Uh, the red coat ends up not liking, getting smarted off to by one of the regulators, and just... Pokes him with a sword, right in the tum-tum. The red coat that did it's like, holy crap, I, I should not have done that, but oh well, it happened. Jamie goes back in later and busts them out, and then he finds out Murtaugh was actually in that town, and he's like, I told you guys to hide, and they're like, no, we're not gonna hide, we have tons of people, we're ready to fight. Roger's really struggling with wanting to even stay in this time period, because he wants to just go home, but he knows that, that uh, Bree wants to be around her family, and he doesn't want to take her with him, her family, but in his mind, the only family he really cares about it, that is his, is Bree and the baby. And so he wants to take them someplace safe, but he knows it's not going to happen. And ah. Also, they can't even leave until they know if the baby can hear the stones. Because if they just try and walk through, they go through. The baby just hits the stones, falls on the ground. That's not great. Back with Claire, she's after burying Brox instead of this dead guy. She sees Marsili is, is carving up some animals. And she's like, well, she knows how to butcher things. I wonder if she could be a doctor. So she brings Marsley in and explains, uh, you know, basically the same thing. Like, we can use his death to learn more. It's going to be kind of gruesome, but you can handle gruesome and you're kind of cool, so what do you say? And then later when Claire is talking to Roger, he's wondering if, you know, like, is, it's his eyesight, why he's such a horrible shot. It's not. He's just a horrible shot. But she also tells him that she wants them to go. She's going to miss them, but she really wants him to be someplace safe because she doesn't feel like she could save him. Even a scratch on the knee could kill someone, so she doesn't want them to be there. And she knows Roger feels the same way. But Claire is steadfast on staying herself, so she's trying to do little steps like uh, distribute medical stuff, but using a male doctor's name so people will believe it. And uh, she's trying to do things like like develop uh, penicillin way too early, just so she can help at least people in her immediate vicinity. In theory, it might mess with the timeline, but there has been tons of inventions all throughout history that like seven different people made before the right person patented it, so she should be fine. Murta ends up meeting with uh, the two dudes that Jamie helped escape, and they're just questioning, like, look, is your loyalty with us, or are things going to go down when all of a sudden Jamie comes around and you don't want to hurt him? And he's like, look, we both have loyalties to our people, so I'll still fight with you, but we, we have different loyalties, but we still have the same loyalty. I don't think, come to think of it, I don't think he gave them a great answer. <laughs> And then when Roger is uh, trying to help Bree take some, I don't know, some basket in the house, he knocks over her sketches and sees that she's been sketching pictures of Bonnet and it's really bothering him. And then immediately she's like, oh, the baby's walking. So he's like looking at this baby with this still kind of confliction because it still might not be his kid on top of the fact that he knows Bree is suffering. And it's just a bunch of weird things layered in for Roger right now. Then we see that Bonnet is at some like hooker fight and he's like, trying to be all a fancy man now, and everyone's like, ooh, high society. He's been doing, like, smuggling jobs, I guess, for people who want to get all their stuff by under the king's radar. One of them harlots that Bonnet said he would bet on wins, and this guy in the crowd's like, hey, you knew she was gonna th th throw the fight, you rigged this, you have no honor, and then they're like, hey, bro, let's go, let's settle it like gentlemen, which just means stabbing each other. Bonnet makes a cut on this dude, the dude yields, and Bonnet's like, no, 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 I'm gonna cut up your face a little bit, because you insulted me. When challenged of, like, why didn't you just kill the dude, because that was pretty gruesome, and you did it in front of everyone. And he's like, ah, I'm setting a better example because I'm a father now. And then he just walks out. So he's coming. He's gonna come back. He's gonna stir stuff up. It's not gonna be good. And then credits. So that's what we got to look forward to. I like this episode, though. It was, it was, it moved really cool, and, um... It's, it's, you're seeing the beginning of where everything's going to go. And I'm excited to see where these things are going to go. Because it's like, what are you going to do? Murta, what is going to happen? Jamie and Murta, he's supposed to be hunting him. He's supposed to be killing him. So, like, what's going to happen when they meet up? That's what I'm most excited about. Bonnie coming back is terrifying. But uh, I think that might make for actually cool stuff to watch. But Murta, I'm worried about. 
But I think that's all I got. Um, I'm interested to know what you guys think, so drop a comment if I forgot anything, left anything out. Don't forget to do the things. Rate, comment, subscribe. I will catch you guys later. Until next time.